just joining us here, guys. Make sure you fill out one of these tickets here. We are going to raffle off a free fishing charter, a couple of free charters at the end of this boat show. I know you just got here. Why don't you fill that out for me? I love the take of fishing. I'm going to hand this over to you, Jamie. Why don't you go ahead and plug that into your side there. Everybody hear us okay on this? Yeah, no problem. Ready to pre 
qualify you with no cost or obligation. Many of them are here at the show. You have dealers, you have finance brokers. Uh, these guys are all qualified to, to tell you what you need to know. Let a professional do the work for you. A finance company will check your credit score, review your income and debt, let you know the max loan amount you qualify for, so you can chop for a vote. And they're also going to access the lowest market rates in the right terms. Additionally, they're going to discuss things like down payment options. Are you a first-time vote buyer? Let the loan officer know if you are a first-time vote buyer and don't hesitate to ask questions. The more you ask, the more you will be able to validate the presentation of the company you are considering. Be sure to ask about down payment options. While zero down payments may sound attractive at the beginning, you might decide that you want to trade up to a newer boat shortly after, and you may find yourself in a, in a negative equity situation. If the, if the boat is a stepping stone, let the loan officer know what your plan is, and hopefully they'll recommend the right down payment for you. How to shop effectively. All right, everybody here has already taken an important first step. Boat shows are, you know, an excellent place to gather information on financing. Collect a lot of rate sheets, business cards, and that will give you an idea of what the going rates are. Remember that everyone is naturally quoting their best rates here at the show, and they do have their limitations and requirements. One thing you may not know is that all of the lenders and finance companies usually use the same lenders. So choosing one good company is all that is necessary to secure the best deal while minimizing credit inquiries. Each time your credit report is pulled, it counts as an inquiry, and it may affect your score. Okay, let's talk real quick about dealer financing versus service companies. e -Bolt Loans is a service company. We specialize in financing. That's all we do. Dealerships also will be offering financing. Most of them have programs for you to consider. If you're educated ahead of time on your qualifications, including your credit score and debt ratio, you can ask the dealer to sharpen their pencil on the finance terms and the boat price knowing that you're not only willing to buy the boat, but you're able. Timing is important to dealers as well, as they must carry a large amount of overhead to run their business. If you indicate that if your terms are met, you can close quickly, that will provide additional incentive for the dealer to give you a great deal at that very moment. Using a service company to handle the financing can empower you with instant leverage when negotiating with the dealer on the price of the boat. Service companies specialize in finding the best deals that the market has to offer, and they oftentimes can provide extremely low rates, often lower times than the dealer can provide, or lower than the dealer may be willing to provide. Service companies can also move very quickly to accommodate a rush close. And, in my opinion, both dealers and service companies offer convenient and competitive loan products. It's just a matter of shopping for the right product that fits your needs. Okay, local banks and credit unions. Depending on your qualifications and the type of loan you're looking for, it might make sense to see what your local bank or credit union has to offer. Usually, lenders that do not specialize in boat loans are not as competitive as your marine service companies. The loan review and closing process can also take longer to complete. Sometimes credit unions come through with very low rates, although they often don't extend terms over seven to ten years. So it depends on how much you're financing. You know, if you're going 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, and you take a seven or a ten year term with a credit union, even though they may have a very low rate, it's going to throw the payment really, really high. So the marine service companies, we offer, you know, terms up to 20 years depending on the loan amount. Become familiar with the boat loan application. Many of you may be quite familiar with the information needed to apply for a loan. Just remember that the application is extremely important to the lender. Along with your credit report, the application serves as a snapshot of your financial strength. Be prepared to disclose your address and employment for the last three years, your income, and the basic information for the type of boat you are considering. Before submitting your application for review, spend some time talking to a loan officer.
within a few minutes, the loan officer should have a good idea of your qualifications, even if they're just verbal in nature at that time. Okay, so they'll, they'll do an interview with you, they'll talk to you about the type of boat that you're buying, they're going to ask you if you have any previous boating experience, they're going to check on down payment options for you and, and what you have available for down payment, and they're going to offer you their, their hot products, and right now, a lot of people, for example, want zero down payment. It's a good program, and it's available. It does depend on credit, and these are the kinds of things that you can get into in that first conversation. Be sure to ask what the requirements are to obtain the advertised rate. So here at the show, remember, everybody's advertising, you know, 6.5%. Well, 6.5% is for $100,000 and up. It has a limited term of 19 years, and it requires a credit score of 720 plus. Additionally, it's not available on high-performance boats. It may not be available on houseboats, although that depends on your, your credit situation. And uh, it also has to do with how well-rounded your credit is. So even though you may have a high credit score, there's also certain credit requirements. For example, how many accounts are on your report, how long they've been open. Uh, do you have comparable credit? So have you had a loan as big as the one that you're asking for in the past? See if those requirements fit your situation. And another important one is ask what supporting information might be required to obtain the deal you want, including proof of income. Will they need a marine survey on a used boat? Are there any down payment requirements to get that advertised rate? And what are the insurance guidelines? One of the main topics that comes up is whether or not the lender will need proof of income. Be sure to review this with the loan officer, especially if you are a self-employed borrower. Many of us here are self-employed. Uh, business owners tend to write off a lot of expenses, and when it comes to proving income, a stated income loan might be a better approach. Be sure to disclose all sources of income, including wages, business income, and investment income. The more income you make, the more palatable you're going to make it for the bank. I'm approved. Now what do I do? Well, once you receive a favorable approval, which typically takes anywhere from 10 minutes to 4 hours, depending on the amount of credit you are requesting, you can then shop for a boat with confidence. Approvals are typically good for 60 days, and the interest rate locks are typically good for 30 days. Have fun. Finding the right boat can be quite an adventure, and many have a great time doing it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about obtaining insurance. Once you've found a boat, the boat of your dreams, you'll need to set up the insurance. Insurance rates are based on many factors, including the boat type, the speed rating, prior boating experience, if you've had any prior losses, and in addition, what navigational limits you're going to be boating in. The insurance application uh, is going to ask questions like, where will you do your boating? If you live in Florida, will you be heading over to the Bahamas? What is your previous boating experience, if any? Have you had any prior losses or claims? And will you be using the boat for part-time charter use or commercial fishing? Insurance, remember insurance is a disclosure business. So you want to tell them exactly what your plans are and exactly what you're going to do with the boat so that you have the right coverage in place. Getting a good deal on your policy, be sure to contact an insurance broker that has several options for you. Once they review your application, they'll narrow down your choices and hone in on pricing. Be sure to ask about coverage amounts and the difference between one policy to the next. And while an insurance agent can't tell you what coverage amount you should take, they can give you the real reasons why having the right coverage is a smart choice. They're going to help you understand your options so you can make that choice. Remember to obtain quotes from an insurance agent as soon as possible once you've decided on buying a boat. In this market at this time, it can take up to two days for the agent to produce the binder, which is necessary to close and fund your boat loan. Quite often, we have customers that will come to us for financing, and by the time they're ready to pull the trigger on the boat, it may already be Wednesday, and they want to take delivery of the boat on Friday so that they can vote on the weekend. Insurance quite often can become a, a, a point of delay. So getting it set up ahead of time is, is the best approach. Always call the agent that handles your auto and homeowner's insurance as well to see what they can do for you as an existing client. 
again, marine service uh, insurance companies do have excellent rates, and they usually beat you know, the state farms and the all states where a lot of us have our auto and homeowners insurance. Nevertheless, check with them and see what they can do for you. In summary, be preemptive in your search for financing. Educate yourself on your credit score and history. Learn about what the market has to offer so that you can make the best choice to fit your needs. Remember that advertised rates have their limitations and there are many factors that go into getting your loan approved, such as not only the credit score, but how well-rounded well your history is, what type of boat you're buying, etc. Choose a professional to pre-qualify your finance request and have a great time in the process. Thank you very much, and uh, I wanted to keep it simple on the presentation. If there are specific questions, let's go ahead and uh, I'll take those questions at this time. Thank you. Have you seen, have you seen uh, lenders tightening up on, on uh, guidelines and requirements like the, much like the real estate market the last month? We have. The question was, are lenders tightening up on lending lending guidelines as uh, the mortgage uh, side of things has? And the answer is yes, but it's, it's not necessarily for the reason we all originally thought. The, the housing market and the mortgage you know, credit crisis that's going on on that side of things doesn't really affect voting because in reality, we're typically lending to your A-tier borrower, your borrower with excellent credit. There's really not a subprime market for boat loans. However, we have noticed that there's additional requests for proof of income lately. There's additional requests for down payment. So even though it doesn't really connect, we are seeing that lenders are tightening a bit. Yes, sir. Yeah. If, if your credit score is really, really good, a real good credit score, can you negotiate below that 6.5% of advertising? That's, that's a great question. Can you repeat the question, James? Absolutely. The question was, if you have an excellent credit score, and, and for excellent, let's say that that's a, a 720 or higher credit score, can you negotiate below the lowest advertised rate, which I mentioned before here at the show is 6.5%? At this very moment in the market, the answer is no. And the reason is that the lenders run on very thin margins. And so the, the rates that they're advertising are already thin based upon what they pay the service companies to close the loan. Now, you can negotiate rates. We can negotiate rates with our lenders from time to time, and, and they will adjust the reserve that we get. Because remember, we don't charge the customer anything to do the loan. However, at this very moment, they're bottomed out, and uh, I, I could not negotiate the six and a half at this very time. So if you qualify based on excellent credit for the six and a half, that's the best that we can do. Thank you. Yes, sir. You touched on earlier about credit ratings or your credit score. Man, let me ask you a question. I'm a little baffled about what constitutes or what creates, a, let's say, the perfect Credit perfect scenario. Yeah. Okay. So if you have a person who has, let's say, one credit card, one mortgage, and a car payment, and they're made every month, on time, never ever late, wouldn't that person have a the best credit score among the main time? Yeah. The, the the question is. I know. I know that doesn't happen. Right. So what goes into getting a good credit score, a good credit rating, and uh, if if a person has uh, an auto loan and and a, and a credit card or two, and they pay those perfectly on time. Uh, shouldn't that be a, a perfect scenario? Uh, yes, let me, let me answer that on a, on a couple of fronts. If you have an auto loan and a couple of credit cards and you pay them on time and you've had a perfect record, you're probably going to have a very high credit score. But where the challenge comes in in that particular situation is that lenders want you to have a certain size history. So when a lender looks at the file, they're going to say, hey, here's a, here's a car loan for 45000 it's been open for two years, and we got a couple credit cards here that are paid perfectly as well. But they have certain minimum requirements. So, for example, they want you to have at least seven trade lines, five to seven trade lines in your history to kind of compare to. Meaning any account. So if a trade line would be one credit card, it was one trade line. One mortgage is a trade line. And what they're looking for is a well-rounded history. 
So lenders want to see that you've had maybe four or five credit cards, that you've had them for at least four to five years. They'd like to see maybe two or three auto loans, perhaps a home mortgage, perhaps a line of credit, perhaps even a small rec loan, a boat loan, a motorcycle loan. Uh, going for a boat loan in the scheme of things is, is kind of, uh, they want that to almost be the, the, the last thing that you're going for. So they want to see that you've already established a credit history on other, on other fronts. So would it be fair then to say that Bill Gates would have a terrible credit? <laughs> Yeah, right, right. Well, that's a good point. Because Bill Gates have terrible credit because he probably pays cash for everything. In, in reality, uh, the, the answer is, and we run into this quite often, people that have a lot of money, okay, and pay cash for everything, and perhaps don't build their credit files or service their accounts long enough, yes, it, it, it can affect it in a negative way. And uh, it does come up. Uh, we'll, we'll have a lender decline a deal. For, for lack of comparable trade lines, and the only fault of the customer was he has too much money. Uh, but that can be explained. We can get around that sometimes with proof of income, tax returns, supporting information. Another great one is cash in the bank. So for the gentleman that is light on credit history but has 500000 sitting in an account because he pays cash for everything, that can kind of help support. So thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, do you see everybody from boat captains to boat dealers with their hands out wanting to participate in your commission? Uh, yes, absolutely. The question is, do we as a finance company have boat dealers and boat captains uh, asking us for a referral fee if they send us a deal? Uh, in our industry, boat dealers typically do not refer us deals unless they don't have in-house financing. Most of them have their own financing and, and they make money on financing. It's one of their ancillary products. However, boat brokers many times do not have in-house financing. And because they're a major point of contact initially in that deal, they can sometimes refer the customer to the finance company. Yes, there are commissions available for boat brokers. Now, in our business, just like in any other business, we have to follow certain regulations and how we handle that, and in every state it's different. The typical commission for a broker is a half a point of the amount financed. That commission does not affect your pricing. That comes from the service company or the lender. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Any other questions, guys? Guys, I, I, have, a, I have some materials to pass out, so thank you very much, and I'll bring them around. Like I said, James has got some uh, business cards up here and some additional information. Feel free to grab the info from him. Jamie, thank you so much. I can tell you I walked away with uh, no one more than I did before, that's for sure. Uh, let's give him a big hand. Uh, thank you again. Just so you can to go down and be armed with a little bit of knowledge. Thanks again, Jamie. Thank you, Captain. All right, gang, we've got another seminar starting at 12 o'clock on, on a trolling.